Thank you again for coming. I'm Molly Bullock. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager here at the Museum of Art. Um, and today we're thrilled to present and to have for you um, Professor of Art and Art History, Brian Chu, and artist Xiaoping Wang, who are going to have a conversation and then we'll all have time to join in and have questions about their teacher, Rosemary Beck. So I'll turn it over to them. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, um, thank you for coming. Um, it's always interesting um, to switch um, um, identity within a very short time. Um, a few minutes ago, I was a teacher in the classroom, and when I talk about Rosemary, somehow I become a student. Um, and looking at her work made me nervous because of um, such a wonderful work. Um, and I think she will forgive me. Um, <laughs> but overall, um, Xiaoping and I will talk about um, Rosemary Back and our teacher um, at Queens College. We were and Xiaoping prepared a, a PowerPoint presentation. We'll talk a little bit about who is Rosemary Beck? At one point, we also want to talk about, as a student, um, in what way we learn from um, Rosemary Beck in the broader sense, from the classroom and from life. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Oh, is this too loud? No, it's not at all. No. Okay, let me just so, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Uh, on one hand, I think I don't think I need it, but then I don't want to yeah, sure. shout. Just it's kind of apprehensive. So is it better that I use it? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you again for coming here. We're very honored that so many of you show up, uh, particularly because you probably do not know, do not know Rosemary, and so we consider this. <clears throat> I'm not crying, so, <laughs> just allergies. <laughs> so we consider it as an honor uh, to Brian and I probably some kind of, now I'm exaggerating to he's being a good enough teacher. <laughs> so you have the interest. So anyway, thank you. So uh, uh, it is like Brian said, uh, both have to suddenly turn back 40 years uh, and get to that very embarrassing, maybe innocent state, and it's kind of a little bit uh, 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 sort of uh, shifting. <laughs> we kind of, uh, so we we'll try our best. Uh, uh, Brian and I prepared this uh, sort of just. Uh, the basic preparation was a sort of just a conversation of our memory of Rosemary Beck. Uh, on the one hand, she has been such an important uh, influential teacher to us, but on the other hand, all those influences are sort of a, a intangible uh, when you try to describe it or to share or to show it. So eventually we decided perhaps we should uh, show something to uh, more visible, so to, to introduce her to you. So uh, the first slide is basically she was born 1923. She was born in uh, Westchester, which is one hour from, about one hour from Manhattan, to uh, a somewhat culture family we heard this from other people, from other teachers. She didn't actually didn't really talk about herself a lot. We uh, we did know that her uh, sister was a dancer and choreographer, and her brother James Back was an art historian at Columbia University. Uh, so uh, other than that, she uh, she trained as a musician and went to Oakland to study art history and music. Uh, she became quite accomplished. 
uh, played professionally in an orchestra until she had an accident that injured her hand. But uh, she talked about music, and her love of music apparently influenced her art to a pretty significant, you know, degree. Uh, so this is her. Uh, she sort of have a not a straight line kind of education, and so after her graduation, she studied uh, history at NYU Institute of Art and started to take like drawing, painting lessons in Arsenal League in New York. And then after that, in the, the next four years, she started to work with various artists, including uh, being for, for one year being assistant in uh, Motherwell. And uh, also in 1948, she, I think she got married uh, maybe around 23 to Robert Felt, and then they went to Woodstock to save money uh, because the uh, rent was quite cheap in the winter. Uh, then they became the neighbor. Uh, their neighbors were uh, Philip Guston, Bradley Walker Tomlin, and uh, she learned she was mentor. Uh, Rose, in Rosemary's own words, she, she said she was a good mimic. She told us that she never really had a formal art education, but she was a good mimic. So this is Robert Felt, who was a writer and a, a literary critic. I believe his expertise was on um, the French writer Colette. That's what I read. And, uh, they uh, had a very loving relationship until his death. So this was <clears throat> in the 1950s, the 60s. Uh, she, because she uh, so-called mimic from Gustin and uh, Thomas Bradley Tomlin, her she originally made a, her career as an abstract painter and made a very good career. But uh, in less than 10 years, she became dissatisfying somehow. And uh, Rosemary kept a continuous journal uh, among other writings throughout her life. So in, in her journal, she talked about this, this struggle to want to make uh, figurative paintings. And she posed a lot of questions on herself. Uh, the first thing she did was she started a series called, she intended to, she was interested in astrology, so she, she intended to do all 12 signs and probably the planet associated with the sign, but she said she, she got stuck when she reached Venus. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have a lot of House of Venus painting, a whole series and we don't, I don't think I really have any seen Neptune, <laughs> I haven't seen anyone. <laughs> but we but there's a lot of House of Venus painting. We go, so so what she so so what she has is she I think this one has a Botticelli uh, reproduction in the back and then she just still likes. Uh, exactly what is a dialogue we don't really know. Uh, by the time we knew her, we uh, she was not painting uh, in this particularly uh, 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 style her she her work has gotten so much more loose, loose. So this cell portrait was done in around the same time. So I'm just showing you a uh, several cell portrait to show how that style of uh, her, her work in other paintings and how she uh, painted herself. Those are all um, very clear on um, Rosemary back um, of abstract uh, painting training even from this work, is uh, a figurative, uh, representational. And you see the, the, the backbone of um, a picture plane is so very strong. And the color is simply a matter of how um, 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 come forward or backward. At that time, they were talking about um, pushing pull. 
um, that the rosemary um, star to um, bring that into a representation of the work. And some very interesting, the integration um, of these uh, two uh, very different approach happening in the very early stage of the work. I think it might be helpful if you have a question that uh, that you just sort of ask them rather than until the very end, because there's uh, certainly a distance of a sort of, a, uh, of what we know and what we don't know whether it's <coughs> or not. <laughs> so, this, so there's that. Uh, so uh, please be spontaneous. Uh, both these some portraits were done in 1953. Uh, so. I guess we want to show these to give some visual information of how she shifted uh, from one to another. Uh, on the one hand, she was uh, she was so con conscious of the picture frame, yes. of being an asset painter. Of course, that you know the, the integrity of the picture frame is so important. You know, every inch needs to count. But on the other hand, she also loved Rembrandt. Uh, so uh, she also loved that very mysterious space. So I do see sometimes that space come back to the painting, like the one on the, on the left. Uh, these two portraits uh, are, were, I, I don't know how to work the one on the right, that seemed a little bit later, but there were quite a few, uh, there were at least, I found at least two uh, Bernard Bellamy paintings and also one, I believe, his son. Uh, it turned out uh, in my research that uh, this writer had a, a extensive uh, correspondence with Rosemary Bag. There were something like 80 letters and more handwritten hand notes, and uh, they're in the car archive in some university. Uh, she, she never talked about this writer to us. But uh, just showed up in my own research. Uh, this shows the kind of uh, space, mental space that Rosemary and Robert lived, because uh, because their background, they were surrounded by painters, writers, and musicians and composers, and probably dancers too. Uh, Rosemary, uh, I recently heard from her granddaughter Doria, who gave a talk last Wednesday, that. Uh, Rosemary was extremely active in the theater in high school. And uh, so she was in charge of uh, stage design, custom design, so on so forth. And that inf informed her art and how she taught. And we'll, we'll, there'll be more information there. So, so they live in this world that was uh, 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 people working in all kinds of media all the time and very passionately talking about it, arguing about it, uh, that kind of world. This is uh, a self-portrait in 61 of her being a violinist. Mm. Uh, uh, again, the thing of music, there's something in this exhibition that the musicians, and we, we will see that over and over again throughout her life until the very last years. So her, our experience of Rosemary Beck was really uh, in the 80s and on. She became a professor there in 1972. The first time I met Rosemary was in 1983, uh, that I took a drawing class with her into a drawing. So, and then she retired in 1990. So, this is a photograph of her of that year. So she would have been 40, Nine. Uh, so this was uh, she was painting his friend in Martin's Vineyard. That was one of the photographs. A lot of these uh, images are uh, from the uh, online images of Rosemary Beck Foundation. So if you're interested, you can go there. Uh, it's quite comprehensive. <laughs> and uh, this is Louis Finkelstein and holding two on the floor and his painting. The reason why we're showing this was right last minute that we thought that uh, Rosemary uh, 
had the probably the unusual experience of living of uh, working with very sympathetic colleagues, and she over the years gave generous praise to everyone around her. And uh, we are impression that she felt very supported by her colleagues, and even though they work in different style. And also, Brian and I, in conversation, we do feel that the kind of education or the her influence that uh, that we that we got from her would not have been possible if she, if she was the only influential teacher in, in, the, in the department. So her influence really. I guess what I'm trying to say is the best of her could just come at full force to us because there are other areas that other faculties have covered. So because because no teacher can be excellent in every aspect of being a teacher. So the best of her came out so full because she, because there were other things that uh, other professors were very, very good at. So we thought, and uh, Louis Finkelstein was. Uh, I think her favorite uh, colleague, uh, a very powerful person. They said he was bossy, but he kind of made the Queens College faculty art, art department one of the best uh, place uh, during those years. Uh, and also, uh, the faculty, um, um, they are very different, but together they share a general direction. Um, I think that made the whole education very meaningful. They are different, but they share something in common. They fought, but they respected each other. <laughs> 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 and this is Robert Bermelin, who had a pretty good career in the 80s. He's still alive at 90. Yes. Uh, he, uh, uh, his painting or uh, the, the, the the three scenes. Uh, scenes. Uh, and this is Harold Ruder. This is a humongous. Uh, his famous painting were a series of humongous stray paintings, but each stray had a lot of reference from uh, Grand Old Chinese painting tradition or symbolism. Uh, so this is just one of them. All of the, the work are uh, online. And this is Gabriel Lattman. Uh, Ladman, who uh, this is an early work, very meticulous uh, plein air, uh, exact uh, a view of Florence. And this is Harold Kramer and Tom Doyle, the two goofy professors. <laughs> <laughs> they both put a chin on the easel. And that's that's the Queens College classroom. Yeah, I recognize that. So uh, I remember that painting, Harry's uh, 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 painting in in the exhibition that went to. So I show what I. Remember, uh, of course, his work continued to develop. Tom Doyle is a sculptor, uh, a, a very, very friendly, nice, uh, a, a tolerating teacher, but a uh, rather low profile. Uh, he is the famous Thomas Doyle that married to Eva Hess. And uh, so, uh, I mean, nobody talked about Eva Hess uh, during our time. Uh, in relation to Tom Doyle, but uh, just I just thought you would mention. Uh, so this is Rosemary Back, and Brian, maybe you will talk about. So so we pick some uh, images of her work, uh, uh, maybe sketches, to talk about as artists formally how she has influenced us. So maybe you want to... Sure. Um, <laughs> um, um, clearly, Rosemary Beck dealing, dealing with a larger relationship. You know, he, she was never interested in um, a small section. And in some degree, um, and I think I learned from teacher um, in the, um, 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 a different way, and particularly in, in this shell and hang on the wall. And, and I feel Rosemary Beck is, uh, is explaining to me about certain things of her interests 
in the some degree, I did not quite understand it when I was a student, which is uh, 30, 40 years ago. On which I I began to under because the reason I could not understand because I I was she taught but I was not able to receive and until probably recently I started to ask the question um, how to how to um, 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 how to reach a sense of um, 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 simplicity for the sake of um, there's a certain thing, the new offices is what I'm really into. Um, when I see the Notes of Mary back in this work, I begin to understand what she's doing. Um, she did not go into, she was not sidetracked. And by approaching to the very general um, form, of, of course, at this time, they probably, um, there was the argument about her form is not necessarily a traditional form. And I guess the, per, the, 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 the issue what I read is by approaching to this way, um, um, she's allowed herself to go into different subjects. Um, obviously, um, and, and mythology, um, something larger than life instead of uh, dealing with uh, um, um, baby life issues. And, and from that I need to understand, um, for example, just um, just look at this, trying to understand that's Karaja. It's Karaja's study. Yes, um, um, you can see the interest of really uh, in Karaja is inspiration to help her understand something. And she obviously could um, copy study uh, Caravaggio, but her interest is something else. As in terms of what is the thing she really interested, I I'm still in the process trying to understand. And but I do know um, is very legitimate, and I can only sense that direction. Does anyone have questions? So um, I've taken a couple of classes with the teacher, and um, I, I took a painting class with him, and I kind of seen like how the dynamic might have influenced his teaching. I was wondering how, uh, like, you think she has influenced your teaching and how she's connected by both of your arts as a teacher. For me, I think when you, um, when you think about teaching, I can see many of my uh, teacher, teachers in here. Um, in terms of Rosemary Beck, if you see a very dramatic act, that is coming from Rosemary Beck. So, um, method, not necessarily a structure method teaching, is coming more from Harold Bruder. And But Harold's um, approach is much more concrete method. And Rosemary Beck tried to open up the method. And this is a something Mm, um, um, if I want to say it, it would be this approach. If there's a something, sometimes when I talk in the classroom, it's not that very clear and very confused. <laughs> for me, it also coming from Rosemary. <laughs> 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 I see. On the previous slide, Reading about the part that we were supposed to read, she um, this is minimalism, calling it stupid and arrogant. She also throws in self-conscious. I wonder how it was that she did not see her own work as self-conscious, given all of these philosophical um, predispositions. That's what always very interesting, and David. When you start to put a have a brush in your hand, you would know what it means. 
<laughs> oh, um, it's, it's exactly dealing with the conscious and not conscious. Because if you do have, um, I think to a degree, particularly representational work, and we always deal dealing with the preconceived notion. And so, for example, a few minutes ago, we were talking um, about contour line. And that's the end of something. But without the contour line, the person gets into where shall I end? And when that question starts to ask, um, you deal with many different conscious. And so to a degree, and also sometimes when you purposefully um, break the contour line, in some degree, you are challenged different kind of consciousness. So that's a part of the reason painting is so interesting because um, it's complex. Could I respond, David? I think that's why I uh, we wanted to show the the other faculty very briefly because. Uh, of course, we wish Rosemary to be back would be here to answer your question. Maybe she would say, well, David, you're absolutely right. I was way too self-conscious. It's very, very possible. That's what she would say. She also was very honest. Uh, so uh, I, I suppose when we teach, we try to share what we believe is, uh, without having totally sort of redeem ourselves committing the sin. <laughs> so I think uh, I know I do that. I, I, I have to, when I teach, I teach what I believe. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. Uh, that, that I have, that have uh, 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 had success in avoiding that mistake all the time. So, so that's what I want to say. The quote was actually from a, uh, a, a book. And the book was, uh, I have the book and I'll, I'll show you that uh, uh, in a form of a letter to students. So she, that was in the tone of sharing her uh, thoughts on the, with a student on the particular topic. So maybe that, uh, that uh, is a factor. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, so uh, let me just recap these uh, few slides that uh, we can uh, have, have more conversation. Uh, so we were seeing these slides and uh, uh, Rose, could you chop my pocket up and show the book? Uh, we're trying to conclude this very fast. Uh, so these, we thought these work, Brian and I have tried to see this style of slides and the proof that we share these that to show what we learned most from her. Uh, she, Rosemary, uh, and responding to your student uh, question as a student, what we have learned from Rosemary was this, uh, because we both had her and uh, be with her a lot uh, during the two years that comes that painting program, uh, you know, five weeks living on a state park, painting every day. That's how you really get to know someone and bond with someone. Uh, we learn how to be open, both as a person, as an artist, and also formal when we paint. This, 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 this constant uh, uh, effort to try to go back and forth because we are attracted to the particulars that is our nature but uh, to compose, to make painting you have to think about that formally, that's just to do a decent job as a painter and beyond that also the larger context of life and not to mention the subtext so she, her biggest influence is that she's just such a strong influence in that, because uh, that that was her nature, she did it was uh, she she was a very powerful person. She was tall and strong, and always working. We couldn't believe how much work she did because she. I don't think I have seen anyone who can work like that because uh, in the morning we get up in the morning from seven to eight we eat breakfast. She had already come back from a painting session. <laughs> <laughs> then after breakfast, we 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 get on site and she and and uh, and she taught us. And she has 
such strength within her. But when you're with her, when, when we were with her, we both and I, Brian and I agreed that we feel all of the power was used to be really curious about her students, really about completely curious about what I'm doing, where I'm going, why I'm doing this. Are there better ways of doing it? Like her power kind of all used in that area. She didn't really even talk about herself a lot. So now thinking back, I, I, I realized that's a very rare talent as a teacher because we certainly all have encountered a powerful teacher who th th that sense of power goes everywhere. <laughs> and she's someone we totally trust. And we totally believe that she cared about us, no doubt. But she also is powerful. You know you don't want to mess with her, yes. But you're not afraid. So I think that was her biggest uh, gift as a teacher. Uh, I, 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 I certainly do not even know where to begin to emulate that myself. So, so that part we learned. But the construction part of Rob, that you probably also learned came from the teacher, from Harold Ruder, and particularly Gabriel Vladimir. So how, how do you literally build a space in a painting that builds over in front of the people? So it's a combination. Not that she doesn't build, but she built in a sort of very lyrical, rhythmic way. She's really more about rhythm, using the rhythm to relate. That, that's her strength more so than building the volume. As you can see, you know, like she kind of, it's like music, she kind of sings along the whole space rather than, you know, build around the deck. So, uh, so, so Brian has. Yeah. Um, Shopping, um, we talk a little bit about um, and what we learn from different teachers and, and construction possible from different faculty. But Rosemary do teach us how to become an artist how to live as an artist. For example, in ComSet, um, she was just clear to every student, saying, when I work in the field, when I have my easel, um, I um, don't come and talk to me or even look at my work. She said that very clear. Um, and it's uh, quite interesting when you, um, and she has a very given part in the classroom, but also she ha she would um, know um, clearly the uh, same certain thing. Um, we, as a student, very, um, um, what, what does this thing mean? Um, it takes a little bit of time for, um, for, at least for me, to uh, decode um, and, and understand the true me. And I, there, there are many things I notice. Um, when I think about her, I don't think about her classroom teacher. I'm thinking about certain words she said to me um, in, in a casual, or not necessarily called casual. I feel she's actually is some kind of self-dialogue. And, but she's um, kind enough to include me in the, um, um, the dialogue. Um, it took me years to figure out what it means, uh, some, some of the words, including when I work in the field of don't interrupt me. Um, don't, don't talk to me, don't look at my work. And there's a sense of privacy. Um, in the way possible, the private, um, in need of certain, so the creative process required certain ingredient at this point that Rosemary is sharing, you better guard them well. Just for example. Okay, can I Sure. So, uh, so these are uh, uh, so so these are three slides of, for those of you who are interested in the method that the probably the teaching tips that we learned from Rosemary. This is her own. Uh, I'm sure you probably have all done this. This is her own sketchbook drawing. She just photocopy them and cut them up and put them on another piece of paper and then kind of work the figure composition. So this is something I'm sure you're familiar with, and we kind of learned that from her. And uh, 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, these are her, uh, she made her own figure. She made her own maquette on the right hand side. She, so for American painting, uh, she would just make crew figures and, you know, arrange them and, uh, and then do very, very studies. Uh, her studio uh, is on Lower East Side and the photo, uh, these photos are, uh, uh, the photo on the left is taken uh, at a studio, uh, it was a small exhibition during the pandemic. Uh, uh, if you're interested, you can go visit if you ask Brian or I for information. Uh, so just a few more pictures to show the Kansas State Park that was a very formative experience for Brian and I. Uh, that's a uh, summer painting program. We lived there uh, for five weeks and just painted every day. And I, 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 for me, the big influence that I think was very taught me how to be an artist. For instance, you always get up three hours before me to paint, which I still don't emulate. <laughs> unable to, but I know the standard is there. <laughs> so, so that's a very beautiful place. It was uh, purchased and bought and donated to uh, New York State, and now it's a conservation park uh, by the uh, uh, fire store by Colonel Marshall Field, and built a big mansion. Uh, I'm not showing sure the dimension, but the view. Uh, so there's a uh, Long Island Sound is a blue park over there and the little lake like thing was a man-made uh, freshwater pound. Uh, I, from what I read, the, the landscape was uh, designed by the Olmsted brothers and it has beach and it has an archer and it has a staple, it has a dairy farm. It was, it was very interesting. So it has all kinds of painting motif. Uh, so that's where we show, we, we, we kind of really learn how to function as an artist and the thing that I've learned uh, during that during the time uh, uh, being a primary painter was, I think, comes forefront is her reminder that when you paint something, you should think about what you're trying to get, whether it's a sense of place, a sense of time. And I found these two paintings, and I the the one on the uh, right is uh, was in the it's done in the 90s and that was Vermont. The one on the left was Bellagio, I believe it was 1983 when I first joined with her. And she went away for three weeks to do residency. And I thought, well, it uh, has never, I'm learning every, you know, new things. And I think what I've learned now is that you could, other than the space construction of Bellagio, of course, it was a city, but also the color of the place it seemed like she really pick that. These are very quick sketches. So that's what I, that, that still stay with me. When I, if I now sketch a landscape, I'm thinking, am I trying, what am I trying to get? What can I get? You know, sometimes I cannot get a sense of time because it's not, it doesn't hit me, but can I get a sense of space? Or if I cannot get neither, is there anything else I can get? Meaning that I need to relate to the place. My love of art needs to step to the love of my topic, my subject. So that's what I learned. I don't know whether Brian you or anything. So that on the yeah. one on the left was a big room, dining room. The uh, Rosemary is a figure on the left, uh, around students. This slide was taken from Doris Park last week. And uh, so Rosemary, these these were the things that she wrote in her own journal. She talked about the last Phrase, putting togetherness. She talked about seeing in her book, uh, this book, she uh, collected writing uh, in the form of letters to students. She talked about the biggest effort of being a painter is try to, the real subject of life's work in painting is the putting together of irreconcilables. And I think that sums up with what she tries to do. And with that, she did such passion, such energy, such effort, such research, uh, it's really energized her work. That's that's what I think. So this photo was taken the last day of the class in 19, when, before she retired, on the day she retired, 1990, Queens College. 
So as you can see, she's a pretty, uh, she's quite a physical presence as well. She's very strong and uh, energetic. And this it was uh, after retirement. She passed away in 2003. I think this was done in 2000. So uh, it's a portrait much later. I believe this is the view of her studio, uh, the Manhattan uh, cityscape. And uh, she, I don't know where you can see, the figure on the left in this purple dress is holding an instrument. So that music theme stay with her all her life. So finally, uh, uh, her her writings are collected in this book, uh, Rosemary Bat, Letter to a Young Painter and Other Writings. It's edited by Eric Sutfin. I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry, Eric. Uh, and uh, they are, these are just two samples from the pages uh, that I think uh, in this paragraph, she talks about uh, the one that I kind of frame it. Uh, she was addressing a particular question, and uh, a, a, a young painter was was feeling stuck. And she said, "You could." Before that, she said, "You can you can try to find a teacher who will give you precise instruction and method, and do exactly uh, 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 whatever, and then you will." Get some result. However, somewhere along in this predicament is a fallacy that the combined thing of schools, uh, pedagogy, techniques, styles, and taste, the shape of an artist will emerge as a nest, nesting form, as a nesting from an egg, intact, ready to take wings. I wish this were so, but I really don't think it works this way. Something unnameable in the person, perhaps even untenable, in all the confusion is the operative beast. In the apparent welter of contradiction he formulates, becoming aware in long momentary flashes of insight, so and so forth. So uh, when I read this, I to me that was a big gift that Rosemary as an art teacher uh, to me because he, she really trusted this and I feel she trusted. So she taught me how to be, how to respect my own doubts, how to respect my uncertainties, how to embrace it and be, be okay with it because she trusted that and I learned to trust that in myself. I think that's the biggest uh, gift to the teacher for me. Uh, so our time is almost up, so I don't want to keep rambling on. Uh, just a few quotes. These are quotes from her other former students, Captain Drapkin, say, living her truth was one of the great lessons by example she gave her students and I also believe her audience. And this is from Colin Randall, Rosemary's personal strength shown through her courage in forging and persisting her own path to climb and contemporary art at the time. And she said, I'm grateful for the model she lived as an artist and human being. So it's integrity. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.